Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Starfleet Shipyards in Indiana. Ha. Okay, enough of that. Uh, this is the second installment of the video uh, tracking of the build of the Franz Joseph Enterprise. Uh, basically, it's just uh, some updates from uh, where we left off last time. A uh, little bit of progress on the structural here. Went ahead and added in uh, uh, structural supports for the uh, nacelle support pylons. Um, essentially went through and uh, once I got that structure in, ran the high energy and plasma transfer lines that go up into the nacelles themselves. Um, some smaller lines that still need to be run but the big ones are in place and I can use them as a model for running the smaller ones now. Uh, you can see they join up to the warp core along the spine of the ship up in the front. Uh, so yeah we've done a little bit of work to the warp core uh, got that in place, uh, did some uh, rework of my structural supports here for the uh, uh, pressure wall and the uh, shuttle, bay, sh shuttle bay area. Um, original ones that I had in were almost non-existent, they were just a uh, kind of a placekeeper. This will be a structural support. Uh, but uh, now I've got uh, full supports in place and they're cut uh, so that uh, the duct work and whatnot can be run through them as, as normally would be the case in, you know, in any kind of a building. Um, Next big thing uh, went through and uh, derived a set of high poly skins off of uh, low poly skins that I had built prior for the dorsal section of the ship. Uh, got the windows cut in here. Uh, essentially, it just took the uh, low poly model, uh, inset the top edge and the bottom edge of it, and derived. Uh, inner outer skins and the internal structure all from that one model and I mean it worked extremely well the workflow was really nice um, you can see the uh, structural members here in place now uh, the originally I had uh, started off putting this together as a uh, vertical and horizontal support trusses and it just did not work. I mean if you look at the thing even in, in standard drawings uh, from here forward you got more than half of the dorsal hanging out there and most of the support is it's resting along this front spar uh, if if you run horizontal vertical and that's just entirely unworkable there's so much strain there that just it would not it wouldn't hold together so I backed off and uh, started reworking this structure and I mean the diagonals are are kind of intuitive once you figure out that the horizontal vertical approach doesn't work and uh, from there, once I got started on the diagonals, I actually set in a uh, majority of this and ended up going to Everhart for the handling of the, the leading edge here. Uh, this isn't a direct pull from Everhart. Uh, it, there's some modification to his design on my part, uh, but I think it works. It uh, lends a little bit more uh, rigidness to the to the leading edge and uh, overall happy with the way that that turned out um, that's pretty much it for for what uh, is done structurally I went ahead and built uh, of course the uh, warp core as a segmented core um, designed it to be ejected out the spine of the ship uh, the uh, uh, core should go up and make a, a nice little turn here and run up under the engineering floor. Uh, in uh, the Jeffries slash Drexler design of the ship, 
uh, main engineering is down in the secondary hull rather than the primary and uh, Drex has got uh, the core running ag again underneath the floor of main engineering and uh, it kicks out the back of the ship I mean uh, I don't know if we can do that and that's actually a reason that I ended up taking a little bit of break from this uh, in order to eject the core through the back of the ship uh, in this case I'd have to cut this section out right here under the uh, impulse drive unit uh, I don't know that there's actually space to do that and I don't know what it does to the structural to shoot it out the back like that but I am looking at it um, and we may end up going that route um, I was happy enough to to get uh, verification that uh, there was a traditional warp core in this ship. So, uh, but there's the core. This is uh, you can see how the thing is set up. Um, this is a. Uh, uh, two-part cradle for each individual segment the, that can be uh, ejected. Um, cradle is an inner and an outer piece. The inner piece is hinged toward the bottom of the outer. Uh, the outer fits into a track here. Two-part track. Uh, if the segment needs to be ejected then it rides the track out to a certain point and this tips the uh, segment up on the vertical so that it can be ejected through the uh, aft of the spine uh, at least for the way this is designed but that gives you a good look at uh, really the the 3D of it rather than looking at again 2D images on the website not that that's necessarily a bad thing but this lets you see a little bit more and over here I just kind of pulled the outer skins of the secondary hull off so we can show you this shaded up. I know last time we did a little bit of this in wireframe but it just uh, I didn't think to shade up and uh, run about the model this way the last time This is definitely one of the fun things about the build is after you've got all this stuff together, being able to play around and, and see how it's all working together, how it all fits together. Um, But that's that. Um, we'll wrap this one up and uh, call that done for video two. I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump right over and do a, a third one here in a moment. And uh, uh, this is an update on where the progress of the overall ship stands. And uh, we'll show you something more here in just a minute. So hang in there and we'll be right back with you.